welcome back. So today we are going to be discussing about AZ104, the Azure Administrator exam. This is something that I've gotten a lot of questions about uh, in my last video about AZ900, right? Uh, how to prepare for this exam, what are the study materials that we are going to be using. So I'm going to try to answer all those questions in this one. In this video, we are going to be talking about three particular things uh, for this exam, right? First is what study materials are you going to be using? Where are you going to be doing all your studying, all your information gathering about the course, right? Um, second would be, now you have the study materials, how would you prepare for it, right? The exam strategy, the preparation strategies that uh, you might employ. Other than this, we are going to be talking about the third point, that's the exam strategy itself, okay? You're prepared, how do you take on the examination? How do you uh, understand the questions? How do you answer those questions? What kind of questions can you see in the exam itself? So the first things first, we're going to talk about the study material, what you should study or where you should study from. And the absolute first thing where you should go to is the Microsoft documentation, right? Docs.microsoft.com or Microsoft has started calling it MS Learn or Microsoft Learn. Uh, this is a really good resource if you want to study any particular topic in Microsoft, right? Uh, for any exam, you are talking about 204, uh, 204, 104, uh, fundamental exams, architect exams, anything, anything in Microsoft curriculum, you wanna study, go to docs.microsoft.com. Now, why is it so important? First of all, this is Microsoft's information in their own knowledge. And this is not like a white paper or something. It's going to be more like a textbook, which is one of the main reasons why I'm not suggesting or recommending any textbooks in this video. Why not? Because this is enough. This would suffice if you're taking like an AZ-104 exam. Once you're done with the documentation, which is super important because exam questions are going to be in pretty much the same language as documentation is, right? So that's super important. But once you're done is number two, within this is the labs. You need some hands-on experience. Yeah? You can just go to a, you can just go into documentation and read everything that there is, but you're not going to absorb as much if you've never tried it on as yours, right? So do some hands-on, and in order to do some hands-on, uh, I'm going to post a link below here. It's uh, it's actually from GitHub, or you can just go to Google and Google GitHub space AZ104 Labs, right? And you'll get a list of labs, a list of instructions, and list of practicals that you should be doing on Microsoft Azure, right? Uh, so you can try out different things with Active Directory, different things with virtual machines, different things with monitoring. So all the topics, all the labs are in there absolutely free. It's in GitHub, right? If you've not tried that before, definitely do try that. Some people might be thinking that, hey, I don't have an Azure account. Where would I practice these labs? Sign up for an Azure trial. They're going to give you 30 to 60 days free, something like that. So you can use Microsoft Azure for your preparation with your email ID and you don't even need, basically you don't need to pay anything. It's not auto renewable, so you don't, you can just give them your credit card information. It's just to track that, hey, you've taken the free subscription. So you don't have to pay anything extra. So that's a really important thing. Get a free Azure account with your email ID. Register for it for 30 days free. Um, I'll post a link for it if you need that. Um, other than this, uh, since we are preparing for the exam, right, one thing is going to help you immensely is actually seeing what kind of questions come into the exam. Yeah, it's great to know all the topics. It's great to know all the documentation. It's great to do all the labs. But what's absolutely critical is that you must know what kind of questions are asked in this exam. Uh, if you know that, okay, there are three case studies, if you know that there are like around 40 to 50 questions and what language the questions are asked and what kind of questions have been asked before, there's no better way to prepare for it, right? Than actually knowing what kind of exams there are. So you can just go to Google, you can type in AZ-104 practice tests or previous questions and stuff like that. So you can get like a few questions that have been asked in the previous exams, right, in the previous months or previous years. Um, I'm going to post a couple of links here, right, for the websites that actually can have a few exams, right. Now, one underutilized resource, if not underrated, would be YouTube, right. Uh, now, there are free videos. I know you're on YouTube already, but if you are not getting any topic, if not understanding anything from the documentation or the practice questions, 
you can always go to YouTube, see other people doing hands-on, uh, see other people explaining the topic so that you can understand it better. Um, if you are into like proper courses, you can check out Udemy. In my personal experience, you do not really require to purchase a Udemy course exactly to clear this exam because it's an intermediate exam. So there's not a lot of topics that you are not going to find in the documentation or not going to understand from the documentation or YouTube. So you can try out Udemy, but not really. You don't really absolutely have to. Now, the second part of this video is going to be the strategy, the preparation strategy. How do you prepare for this exam and what do you need in order to clear this test? Now, you have the list of materials, you have your practice questions, you have your documentation, you have your labs and you have your YouTube or any other preparation material that you have. But how to utilize them, what to study first. My first and the most important recommendation is do not see practice questions unless you know the topics. You have not studied the topics from the documentation or you do not know the topics or you do not know the hands-on. Please do not check out the practice questions. They're going to demoralize you. They're going to demotivate you because the practice questions are notoriously difficult sometimes, right? The questions asked on the exam are difficult, but it's going to make more sense if you have some idea of the topic. So how do you actually prepare for this exam? First of all, always, always start with the documentation. Once you've done with the documentation, at least skim over it, right? You don't have to go too deep into it, skim over it. You get some topics in your head. Now there's time to do some hands-on so that you understand it a little better. So first, always start with the documentation. The second step would always be the labs, right? Go into the GitHub labs that I just talked about a minute ago. Go into those labs, try them out uh, so that uh, you can get a more hands-on on those exams. Now, for all the holes that you're seeing in the lab that, oh, there were a couple of things in the labs that I didn't really get, come back to documentation to study that, right? Now, that's how you cement things up. This approach could be different for different people, right? You can check out the documentation or you can check out the YouTube's, uh, YouTube videos, but never, never start with the practice questions. Other than this, when we are talking about the strategy of the exam, once that part is done, now you can move on to the practice questions. Once you know about the topics, once you know about what a virtual machine is and stuff like that, the basics. Now this exam is not testing you on absolutely difficult things, it's testing you on the basics. Now you can get into the practice questions. Now the third part of this video is going to be what should be your strategies for taking the exam, right? You know what to study, now you know how to study it. Right? The third part is how to apply that on the exam itself. Now this is a 180 minute exam almost three hours right so not it's exactly three hours so it's a three hour examination uh, and those three hours are enough actually you're going to do about like 40 to 50 questions sometimes it's slightly higher than 50 but mostly it's somewhere around like that ballpark 40 to 50 questions you don't need to worry about like oh i'll run out of time you are not going to run out of time 180 minutes are enough but the thing is, within this exam, there are a few case studies, at least a couple of case studies you're going to see. And for this, a really important source would be the, uh, the practice questions that we are talking about, right? Go to the practice questions, see that there are some questions about the case studies, right? There are, and those case studies never ever change, right? For 104 exam, there are like three or four case studies out of which they ask the questions, out of those, Two would definitely appear on the examinations. Two of them would definitely be there. Apart from the case studies and apart from the questions that are going to be asked, right? They're going to be about 50 questions. During the exam, even if you're taking it like from home or from the center, you have an ability to review the questions, put the questions as review. If you don't get the answer properly, if you're not sure about the answer that you've just taken, just mark the question as review. So what's going to happen is the more questions you put in review, once you're done with the test, they're going to show you those questions that you had put on that review that, hey, you need to review these questions again. So it's always helpful to have a fresh perspective later on, right? Sometimes you just don't, answers don't come to you the first time you're doing it. So don't be shy in reviewing the questions. You're not going to be penalized for that or anything like that. Absolutely go to review these questions. With that, I'll come to the next point. Do not put too many questions inside of that review basket why because that's going to confuse you if you're just doing 50 questions 
if you've done 50 questions and out of those 50 you've just put 40 in as review what's even the point of that you're going to review 40 questions seriously not really one really important thing is that with case studies be firm and be very confident with your answers because you will not be able to review them you will not be able to check them out once you've answered them so for the case study questions be very confident with your answers right can't stress that enough so that's why you should go back to point one and study the case studies so if you uh, require some practice questions or practice tests and queries like that i'm posting a link to a form below uh, you can just go to the form fill it out and give me your name your email id and so that i can respond back to you in time and just uh, give you the information that you require if there are any other questions regarding microsoft azure or any other cloud topics or stuff like that um, you can just feel free to use the comment section and ask away right i read the comment section i try to answer the questions as much as possible feel free to subscribe to the channel if you like the video and i'll see you around thank you so much